All right, good to see everybody here this evening. Welcome to the midweek service, and uh, glad you're here tonight. And uh, let's get a songbook and start by singing together, shall we? 195, 195, down at the cross where my Savior died. Glory to his name. And once you have it, let's stand together to sing, all right? Brother Bob's going to lead us. On that first together, down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name I am so wondrously saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his name glory to his name glory to the blood applied glory to his name on that last together come to this fountain so rich and sweet plunge into day and be made complete glory to his name glory to his name the blood applied glory to his name all right good singing good to see you in church tonight well we're gonna get uh at least one more blast here i guess huh and uh it's all right we can take it and uh it's almost to the end and spring's coming amen and so is the Patch Club. Here they come, all right? Come on in. We're waiting on you. We're going to pray, and they're going to sing for us tonight, all right? Good to have them here. All right. We'll let them get in their spot, and then we'll have prayer together. All right, let's pray together, shall we? Father in heaven, we thank you now for this evening and for another opportunity for us to gather together here in the house of God. We do pray your blessing now in our service tonight. Meet with us, Lord. Give us what we need here in the middle of the week. And Lord, we pray you'll bless the children as they sing now. Help them to do their very best for thee. And Lord, I pray you'll be pleased with the entire service this evening. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated.
right, let's turn in our hymnals to number 57, number five, seven years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Five, seven together. You can remain seated as we sing that first, third, and last together. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me. letters from the McCombies, missionaries with BIMI West. Dear pastor and church family, today the Lord is still looking for someone through whom to show himself strong. Second Chronicles 16.9 says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those, I'm sorry, in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Ian e. Bounds, in his book on power through prayer, stated, God acknowledges his dependence on men as a channel through which he can exert his power. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 28, 18 through 19, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. May I also add that God acknowledges in these great commission verses that he is dependent upon men to express his saving gospel to a lost and dying world. Oh, may he show himself strong in the behalf of us as our hearts are found perfect toward him to be allowed to preach his glorious gospel. In the winter months of 2014-2015, we traveled a total of 3,928 road miles in the states of California and Arizona. Mike had the privilege to preach one Faith Promise Missions Conference, three Missions Emphasis Sundays, fill the pulpit on Sundays in two churches, preach on the priority of missions in a Baptist Distinctives Conference, preach a Christian Home Sunday in a nearby church, and attend the installation service of a new pastor in one of our supporting churches. We also visited four churches when not in regular scheduled meetings, attended a pastor's fellowship meeting in Arizona, and helped host a missionary kids fellowship at West Coast Baptist College, and finally preached two days of Christmas services at the local L.A. County prison facility. We had opportunities to go soul winning in several churches, including a new church plant in the Los Angeles area that began in November. Wilda had the privilege of leading two young ladies to Christ during the invitations at the two churches we were in, and when Mike gave the invitation after preaching in one of the prison meetings, six inmates came to personally tell him they received Christ that day. We are indeed grateful for all of our supporting churches that help us financially and pray for us. You are making a difference in allowing us to minister in your stead in the lives of people and in churches elsewhere to the places we travel in the western United States. Prayer requests. Health and safety, being free of mechanical issues while on the roads, 
a full schedule of meetings for 2015, power and liberty to preach and present missions and faith promise giving, more salvation and surrender decisions, and more believers in the West to answer to the call of church planning missions. Your friends in the harvest, the McCombies. Yeah, this church has supported the McCombies for years before I came, and um, I think they were, they might have been missionaries somewhere, and then of course they've come home, and now they represent Baptist International Missions Incorporated, BIMI. Uh, they represent them out on the West Coast, and uh, that's why they travel through California and Arizona and other states there in the West, and uh, just uh, getting churches to be burdened about missions. That's that's sad. You got to do that, but that's what you got to do. And uh, yeah, they they're doing a great job, and as you hear, staying busy, and uh, it's great to see them continuing to serve the Lord. Uh, got your prayer sheet tonight? Anybody need one? Got in without one? We'll get one to you right away. Everybody good? Great job, guys. All right. Uh, start on the back with the coming events, if you will. Uh, tomorrow night, the RU Inside down at the CRC prison. Uh, again, a great time down there, and I appreciate you. Remember to pray for us on Thursday nights. Uh, we, we certainly appreciate that, and uh, I'm sure that, uh, uh, that God hears those prayers, and he's been working in the lives of these men in a great way on Thursday evenings, and so we are looking forward to that. Then Friday night, uh, our Reformers Unanimous right here at the church, 7 to 9 p.m., and then uh, men's breakfast this Saturday at 8.15. If you haven't signed up for that, make sure you sign up this evening downstairs, and uh, then we'll get together Saturday morning for the men's breakfast, and then, of course, our soul winning and bus visitation at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Then don't forget, Saturday night, you got to go forward an hour, all right? So when you go to bed at uh, 10 o'clock on Saturday night, it's already 11 o'clock, okay? You just push that thing ahead, and um, maybe you ought to go to bed at 9 o'clock. So then you're going to bed at 10 o'clock, all right? And uh, But if you stay up till midnight, it's already Sunday morning. You know, it's uh, going to be 1 a.m. when you go to bed. So uh, you want to make sure you get your sleep in so you can be here right on time Sunday morning uh, for our services on Sunday. Okay, all right, on the inside of the, the list, of course, praise the Lord for Elijah, profession of faith and baptism on Sunday. Elijah Barham, 57 last week at the prison with six receiving Christ their Savior and two graduates, and then uh, 35, over 35 that are praying and fasting uh, and prayer only in March for those requests that we passed out on Sunday evening, and uh, thank you so much for praying and doing that. By the way, I got a great report. Brother Moreland texted me today, and he said they've uh, just just this week they've had three churches call him and want to take him on for meetings. So uh, I tell you what, uh, prayer works. Amen. Uh, he was excited about that. All of them very interested in Bible translation work and uh, the very work they're doing. And so it's a uh, it's uh, he was excited. That's good news. And also I want to let you know too the the. Uh, Got a call today from Carol Treadway. They traveled home today, and they they just she just got a hold of me like six o'clock this evening, and uh, they're back in town. They got in before the storm, so uh, they are back safely from Florida. And uh, what a thing to come home to, huh? And uh, maybe they want to turn around and go back. I don't know, but they're I, I, they're glad to be home. You know how that is when you've been away. It's uh, just good to be home. So uh, we're thankful they're home safely. All right, uh, the church requests and ministries, and of course, many, many on the health list, and uh, you can look at those and take your time to go through those, and especially remember Brother Hood there, Pastor Hood at the bottom with his congestive heart failure, continue to lift him up in the church in prayer. Uh, we pray for those in authority, from the president and the leaders of our country on down to our local leaders uh, here in the state of Ohio, praying for those battling cancer, praying for these on the salvation list, and for the Lord to uh, bring them to Christ. And then, of course, our military, those who defend us and uh, are on guard for our country's safety. And then our missionaries, uh, highlighted tonight by the McCombies, who are uh, representing BIMI in the West. All right. It's good to have the poll labels back tonight. Brother John, would you make your way up here to the front? I would like him to lead us in our prayer this evening. And as he leads us audibly, I want us to pray along with him silently. We can unite our hearts together in prayer. And uh, Brother John, you lead us, please, if you would. It's good to be back. <laughs> Let's pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us this night, and we ask that you to help us. It's a meeting tonight that uh, the Lord be able to speak to each one of us in the message. We pray that you'd be the pastor and give him just exactly what he needs to know what to do and when to put the, the message in the, in the message, and we ask that you'd be with uh, the outreaches we have here that uh, we have going out from the church. The, there's very uh, many of them, many of them, and uh, we just pray that you'd call those people that you want to come and uh, be involved in those, and we ask that you'd uh, help them and give them that, that they need to be able to do the job that you've called them to, and we ask that you'd be with uh, even those that are back there in the nursery now tonight taking care of the little ones that are uh, need to be watched and taken care of, and we thank you for the Pastor that came in tonight and the message they would give us some prayer and the song you gave give us and we pray that you to continue to help them uh, memorize scripture and do better in the songs that they are singing and we thank you for them thank you for those that are dealing with them and watching over them and guiding them directing them and we ask that you'd uh, be with our missionaries that are out uh, around the world and we pray that you'd watch over them that you'd uh, give them the message they need and watch them protect them and uh, so that they can get around in uh, cars and r r running whatever they run, buses, and uh, some of them have, air have to use airplanes to get into small areas, and we just pray that everything would go well with those, and we thank you for them, and we pray that you'd be with uh, those that are on the sick list we have here, and uh, I think of Brotherhood spent many, many years over there at uh, the Faith Mission, and we pray that you'd continue to help him and get those that... Uh, are over there that they would get get behind him and pray for him and uh, get him back up on his feet and we pray it should help him now with the mission and uh, we do pray for the those that are other ones on the sick list that are uh, battering, battering uh, maybe cancer or maybe just the flu or whatever it is we just pray it should help them get back on their feet and we pray for those that are on on the list that are unsaved that uh, our members uh, maybe the the wives or the husbands of members here at the church and we just pray that they would see the importance of getting saved and wanting to do serve you here at this church and may we pray for them that they'll, they'll get that uh, settled before they go out into eternity because after that it'll be too late and we pray that you'd there's one here tonight that does not know you as lord and savior we pray they get that settled tonight get it uh, to where they know that Jesus Christ died for them and uh, he is here and he's uh, uh, leaning on their hearts and, uh, and the pro some of the problems they're having there is because you're not right with him and we ask that you'd help them see the importance of getting saved and we ask that you'd continue to help them now and we ask that you'd be with uh, the uh, uh, men that we have voted into office that they would get their act together we pray that uh, someone would be able to get in to them and and give them the gospel and that they would receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and then set out to serve serve you him through him and uh, we ask that you would help them uh, be doing the things that are supposed to be right not the immoral things and we pray that you continue to help them uh, continue to do what we need to do here and around the world and we ask that you would uh, be with us tonight we thank you for the money that you've given us and we pray that you'd help us be cheerful givers and give back that you that you want us to give tonight and then we pray that it would be used for whatever you want it to be used for you have a per you have a plan for each and every one of those each every one of those dollars that comes in we just pray that you'd help us now and help those that are spending it that they spend it wisely and we do pray that you'd be at the mission the uh, message tonight that we'd have listening ears and be able to want to serve you more today than we did yesterday and we pray that you'd help us throughout the week now we pray that you'd give us the wisdom and the, and the knowledge we need as we serve you throughout the days uh, that we are at home and uh, at work and also out maybe at the restaurant or things like that we pray that you'd help us now to be good stewards and help you um, continue to work on our body we pray in Jesus name Amen all right looking to see good to have sarah cato with us tonight sarah's over here and uh passing through on her deputation travels and uh tone for the service 60 percent 
you're right at the 60 percent mark isn't that great and uh praise the lord continue to pray that god will bring that support in and she can get down to the field her parents are starting a brand new work and i know she'd be excited to get down there and be a part of that and so we'll continue to pray for her this lady over here is uh kathy sterner correct and uh euclid baptist church Euclid Bible Baptist Temple, all right, up in Euclid, Ohio. Uh, the pastor there is, I was say, I never say his last name, I don't think, Risteco? Risteco, okay. He's been there 36 years, if I remember right, in his email, and uh, with New Pastor Rock, and um, uh, Kathy's down here for, I think he wrote, is it a couple weeks? Uh, some business uh, things to do down here, and uh, was asking for a place for her to stay, and so... I didn't. I said, well, our missions apartment is open, and uh, we'd be glad to have her stay there. So she's staying up there for the next couple of weeks, and uh, and uh, it's our pleasure, and uh, glad we can be a blessing to you. Good to have you in the service tonight. All right, all right. And I also want to say, right before we sing this song, I tell you what, I if you didn't hear Benjamin Netanyahu's speech to Congress, you need to look it up and listen to it. We've forgotten in America what a leader sounds like. And if you want to hear what a leader sounds like, listen to his speech. Uh, that's leadership. And uh, talk plain and straightforward. Uh, we we haven't heard that in so long. And we don't know. There's some people who don't know how to handle it. And, uh, boy, God bless that man. And uh, God bless Israel. And uh, appreciate appreciate his words that he had. And uh, you'll you'll be blessed if you'll listen to that. And uh, pray for that situation and uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. All right. <clears throat> well, take a songbook. We're going to sing it together. All right. Turn over, if you will, to number 39. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Number 39. And let's stand together to sing it. All right. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love, at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together.
Take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold, not a mite would I withhold. Let's sing that last together. Take my love, my God, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. On that last together. Take my love, my God, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be Be seated, if you will. We'll have the ushers come and get our offering tonight. Again, we'll, we'll uh, put tonight's offering towards the country fair uh, coming up in May. Be here before we know it. And uh, it'll be a great, great time. I hope you're praying for that. And we'll see what the Lord will, will do for us on that day. Okay? Let's bow and we'll pray and ask God's blessing on our offering. Father, thank you for the privilege that's ours to give. And Lord, we do lift up the fair day again to you. Lord, I pray that there'll be hundreds of people that will come. Give us opportunity to share the gospel with folks. And we ask you that souls will be saved, that families would be blessed. And Lord, you draw folks to yourself through this time. And Lord, we want to do it to show people that we love them because God loves them. And, Lord, I pray they'd they'd sense the love of God for them. And as they come onto the property that day, I pray you'll bless the offerings uh, that we put towards this, Lord. I pray that you'll meet the need. You always have, and we believe you will again this year year also. So bless the gift and giver alike this evening. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible this evening and let's go to Revelation 21. We are going to endeavor to make it through 21 and 22 here this evening. I uh, won't be able to dwell on some things as long as I would maybe like to, but we'll uh, get this done. I want to, I'm excited to get started on a few Bible studies on prayer for the month of March, and we'll begin that next Wednesday evening. So we look forward to that. But Revelation 21 and 22, we come to the final chapters of the book. And this will be exciting times for our life, that's for sure. Uh, verse 20, chapter 21, verse 1, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. 
And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Father, we ask you to add your blessing now to the reading of the Scripture tonight and the other Scriptures as we work our way through these two last chapters of the book of Revelation and really the two last chapters of your inspired Word. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to glean the truths that we could from this and that would help us. And I pray, Lord, that the Spirit of God would minister your Word to the hearts of people this evening. Help me as I teach the lesson and to say what needs to be said and leave unsaid what doesn't need to be said. If there's anything that I need to say that I hadn't planned to say, I pray you'd bring that to my mind and my remembrance and I'll say them. Lord, help me to refrain from saying anything that I might have planned to say that you don't want me to say. And so, Lord, I pray, though, that the Spirit of God would be the master teacher and that he would put the truth into our hearts this evening. So honor, once again, the, the preaching, the teaching of the Word of God. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Now, uh, except for just a few verses in these chapters, uh, it really doesn't have anything to do with earth as we know it. Uh, right now, all right? Uh, there's going to be, as the verse 1 tells us, a new heaven and a new earth and a, a, something called a new Jerusalem, okay? All these things are going to be new and uh, we're going we're gonna to notice some changes that will take place when this takes place, all right? And one of the changes is there's going to be no more sin, no more temptation, no more sorrow, no more pain. That's what verse number 4 tells us. And we, we know a uh, second change that we'll see. The new Jerusalem comes down from God out of heaven. That's in verse 2. And we also see it mentioned again down in verses 10 and verse 11. Uh, verse 10 says, He carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even as a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Again, describing that new Jerusalem that somehow comes down from God out of heaven, and it appears that we're going to have earth, we're going to have heaven, and then in between the two, kind of in a suspended state, will be this thing called the new Jerusalem. All right? And we know, number three, the third change is we will travel between earth, New Jerusalem, and heaven. We will be able to go uh, any one of those places that we desire to go. There's num number four, the next change, is there's no sun to give the light because the glory of God and the glory of the Lamb is the light of the New Jerusalem. Uh, verse number 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. All right? And He is the light. And God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. And then number five, we notice there's no more sea on earth. Notice in verse number one, <clears throat> it says the first earth, the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And notice there was no more sea. No seafood diets. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sorry about that, you seafood lovers. You say, what are we going to eat? Well, I got bad news. We're probably going to eat fruit. Okay? Revelation 22. Notice in chapter 22, we'll talk about this later, but in the midst of the, in the, midst of the street of it, on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which, had, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So we have the tree of life there, and it's going to yield fruit every month. And we'll say more about that when we get to it, but that's uh, probably what we will enjoy when we get into heaven and the new Jerusalem. 
So this heaven and this earth, by the way, Jesus said it would. When Jesus said, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Because the words of God are eternal. Not just word, by the way, singular, but words, plural. And they're not going to pass away, they're eternal. And he said, but heaven and earth will pass away. So you get real excited about save the earth campaigns? No, I don't. Why? God, God's in control of that. Man, man arrogantly thinks he can destroy God's creation, and man, man can't do that. God is going to, by the way, uh, you, you'll find out that God's going to burn it all up anyhow. In fact, look over, hold your finger there in Revelation. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3. We ought to look at that, because I think some who want to save the earth and all that kind of stuff, you ought to know how to answer those folks. And in 2 Peter chapter 3, Notice verse number 7. Let's start there. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store. In other words, they're kept in store, by the way, by God. What are they kept in store for? They're reserved unto fire against a day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Then just go on down uh, through the passage to verse number 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's what we're looking for. Uh, there's going to be a new heaven, there's going to be a new earth. We don't have to worry about keeping this old one. All right? And God's going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. Now, it says in Revelation 21 and verse 2 that that holy city, the new Jerusalem, comes down uh, out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. All right? And, and, and all, listen, at any wedding you go to, it, there's never been an ugly bride. Okay? Uh, when, in fact, when, when the, the groom comes out and stands, but I tell you what, as soon as the bride enters the room, uh, nobody's looking at the groom. No one's looking at, you know, who. all eyes are on the bride. And as this city comes down out of heaven, all eyes are on this city. All eyes are on the beauty uh, that God has prepared. This is the place I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. This, hey, the beauty of this world, the beauty of God's creation that He did in six days, what beauty awaits us that has taken him 2,000 years to prepare? It'll be incredible to see. It'll be absolutely uh, unbelievable to be able to look at. It's prepared place for prepared people. And now we know, according to verses 3 and 4, that sin and rebellion has been put down, that, that a holy God, a righteous God, now dwells with man and dwells with us. Because remember, so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so we're in His presence. And it's at that time that God wipes away all tears. Okay? Up to that point, there are tears in heaven. Okay? And you have to understand that. What, why, why are there tears? Well, I think, number one, I think there's tears of shame. Tears of shame. What are those tears of shame? First John chapter 2 and verse number 18. 1 John 2 and verse 18. <clears throat> it says, Little children, it is the last time, as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. And then he goes on to say um, that they went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they no doubt would have continued with us. Uh, but... 
but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But what I'm, you know what? I'm looking for verse 28. There, that's what I want. Verse 28. Look there. And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He shall appear, we may have confidence and not be what? Ashamed before Him at His coming. If you're not abiding in Him and, and, and letting His Word abide in you, oh, Jesus is still coming, but you'll be ashamed at His coming. And you'll, be, you'll be ashamed, and there'll be tears. Tears of shame that you didn't live for God. Tears for shame that you weren't sold out for Christ. And it'll, you'll be ashamed of how you lived and ashamed to see Him. So then I also think there's tears of terror Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Tears of terror. 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Remember, that what is the judgment of all the unsaved people? What is that judgment called? The great white throne judgment. What is the judgment of all the saved people called? the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, At the judgment seat of Christ, there are no lost people. At the great white throne, there's no saved people. Okay, Two separate judgments. This is the judgment seat of Christ, and will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord... We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. God says, I'm gonna, when, when I face the results of my labor for God, I'll have some tears. Understanding the terror of the Lord because of my works for Him, and, and not just my works, but my motives for my works. Why did I do what I did? Did I do it to perform? Did I do it so I'd look good to other people? Or did I do it because I love the Lord Jesus? If I don't... It's 1 Corinthians 13, Paul said, if I even give my body to be burned, if I even become a martyr and don't have charity, and I don't do it for charity, in other words, for, for, for love of God, then he says, I'm become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. It means nothing. Not nothing you do is to impress somebody else. What you do is because you love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And you do it because you love the Lord. And so we'll have tears of terror. And then we may have tears of loss that goes along with that same judgment. Not only have it there in 2 Corinthians 5, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. That's the, uh, the <coughs> little more detail about the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible talks about in verse 11, 1 Corinthians 3, other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So you have, you have six things you can build with. You can build with gold, silver, or precious stones, or you can build with wood, hay, and stubble. Okay, so you have six things there you can build with. You say, well, what's it matter what you build with, whether it's wood, hay, or stubble, or gold, silver, and precious stones? Here's why you want to be careful what you build with. Because it's going to be tested by fire. Okay? Now, if it's going to be tested by fire, do you want gold, silver, and precious stones, or do you want wood, hay, and stubble? Uh, how do you think wood, hay, and stubble will ha stand up under fire? Not very long. Huh. It'll burn up pretty quick. Okay, And so God is saying, Here's, we have the foundation, that's Jesus Christ, but how are we going to build? And it says, every man's work will be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Saved but singed. Saved but nothing to give to God. No crowns to cast at his feet like we read about in Revelation 4 and 5. And that'll be 
tears of loss, when our works are burnt up, because not just what we did, but why did we do it? God says in that day, the counsels of man's heart are going to be laid open. And he'll know why we did what we did. And, and the things we did without the motive of a love for God and a love for Jesus Christ, that it would be for his glory, that it would be for God to receive the honor, God to, re to, to look good, the things we did that we get honor, the things we did that we might look good will burn up and it'll be gone. And we'll have tears then of loss. And then I think we'll have tears in heaven over our lost loved ones. I mentioned last week when we talked about the great white throne judgment that we'll be there. We're, we're simply there as observers because wherever the Lord is, that's where we are. And if God's there, we'll be there. And we'll see our loved ones cast into hell cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone and I think when that happens I think there'll be tears that, and, and that's when God will wipe away all tears and so the great promise in verse number 4 of Revelation 21 is, is there shall be no more death hallelujah someone said you know what this life is it's a continual march to the cemetery you know who never hurts for business? The mortuaries. The cemeteries. They're, they're constantly a, a, a continual march. You know, I was, I was, when I was reading about this, reading about when they built the great interstate system of our country, you know what their, their, their biggest hindrance was? You think, oh, it was mountains they had to blow through. No. Uh, rivers they had to build. No. You know what the biggest obstacle was? cemeteries avoiding cemeteries having to move places where, try to move where people have been buried difficult thing it's amazing no cemeteries in the New Jerusalem no hospitals in the New Jerusalem I was going to say, I was going to say no morticians while well, there might be a few saved ones they'll be there but no, there won't be any professional. That won't be their profession there. There may be some doctors there, but that won't be their profession when they get there. No need for that. All things new, he says. All things fresh. I'm Alpha and Omega. That's Jesus speaking. He's got the first word and he has the last word. And, and he says, whosoever, he gives the invitation, and you'll see this several times uh, through these two chapters. I will give to him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. I'm going to, uh, not, not just a cup of water, but a fountain. Remember he said, you believe on me, you, out of your belly will, show, will, will flow rivers of living water. Not just a cup, but a continual flow and a continual fountain. And the Lord still gives that promise. And so, it reminds us in verse 8 of the folks who won't be in heaven, those who were turned into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, and he gives us those <coughs> list of people there. And then let me, let me give you three simple facts about that. The, the new heavens and the new earth didn't affect the lost at all. They're still, they're still burning in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. There's no possibility, number two, there's no possibility of sin ever breaking over into the new heaven or the new earth. It's an impossibility. And it reminds us that the lake of fire is eternal. They never get out. They are tormented forever. Now we get to a description in verses 9 through 11 of the New Jerusalem. And let me just give you <coughs> five simple things here about the, the description of the New Jerusalem. All right? Number one, notice there's 12 gates of the city. And those twelve gates, verse 12, and the gates twelve angels and the names written thereupon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So there's twelve gates after the twelve tribes of Israel. and there's, So there's four sides to the city and there's three gates on each side. And each gate you find later on is a solid pearl. Incredible to be able to see. 
Number two is the wall of the city. And in the wall of the city has 12 foundations. And those 12 foundations are named after the 12 apostles. Number three, we find out the city is four square. It's literally a cube. And that cube is 1,500 miles each way. 1,500 miles this way, 50 miles that way, 50 miles that way, and 1,500 miles that way. Huge. Incredible. And the streets, you'll find in chapter 22, are pure gold. Pure gold. Transparent like glass. Unbelievable. It's like the, it's like the fellow who you know, said he died and took his suitcase. He had a suitcase full of gold he was going to take with him when he died. So he showed up at the gate of heaven, and, and uh, Peter always meets people there. I, that's not in the Bible, but that's, that's the way every joke goes, you know. And Peter meets him there, and, and he wants to know. Uh, uh, he's not sure what to do with this guy with his suitcase of, of gold, and, and the guy thinks maybe he can buy his way into heaven. And he opens up the suitcase and shows Peter that suitcase of gold like it's going to impress him. And Peter gets on the phone and he calls up God and says, God, there's a fellow here and he thinks he can buy his way into heaven. And God says, well, what, what does he have that he thinks he can buy his way into heaven? And Peter says, I don't know. It looks like me. He's got a suitcase full of pavement. <laughs> not, not anything that in heaven. It's just pavement. Amen? <laughs> what, what man worships here... We'll walk on up there. Won't be anything. Pure gold. There's no temple. Number four, there's no temple to represent God because He's there. And, and we can be in constant fellowship with Him all the time. He can fellowship with us all the time. And then we notice number five, the gates are never shut. You can go in and out at will. You can go in and come and go as you please. There's never a curfew. There's, never a, there's no need to shut them. It's a perfect civilization. No sin, no corruption, no temptation, no defilement. None of that can... Who's there? Only those whose names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's, it's, it's almost... You know what it is? It's almost a complete return to Eden. To the original state that God had when He created man. That place uh, where He could fellowship and, and, and be with Him. Nothing can come in. Verse, or chapter 22 now. I want you to notice that, would you please? And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. <coughs> And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him, and they shall see His face. And His face shall be in, the, and His name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servant the things which must be shortly, which must shortly be done. And so we, we have the beginning now again, uh, a pure river, a tree of life with uh, uh, fruit to eat. The river comes from the throne of God. That's the source of the river. All right. And uh, the, the, the tree of life there. There's 12 different manner of fruit. Uh, it, from that, you, you, I don't, I'm not sure that it has 12 different kinds of fruit on there. You just go up and pick what you want. Could be. But it could be that every month a different fruit comes out. And every month we'll enjoy a different kind of fruit. I don't know. It just says it bears 12 different kinds of fruit. How that will come out, we're not sure. Um, but we do know it will be a continual supply and it will be a continual variety that we'll be able to enjoy. And we can eat and drink to our contentment. And you won't have to worry about your weight. Okay? Don't have to worry about that. No more curse. Okay? And uh, that's gone. And uh, very similar again to the Garden of Eden. And then it says, His servants shall serve Him. 
We're not just going to be, you're not just going to be sitting on a cloud playing a harp. Okay? You get that picture, people get that picture of heaven, and man, how boring would that be? Oh, no, you're going you're gonna to be anything but bored, my friend. And, and it, you'll, be, you'll be in awe just to look at the place to begin with. And then to be able to, and, and by the way, not only will you serve him, but verse number four, did you notice this? And they shall see his face. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold him. Jesus Christ who died for me. And I, you know, I asked Fanny Crosby whether she ever regretted being blinded by the mistake of a doctor, and she says, oh, no. She said, for the first face I'll ever see will be the face of my Savior. What a joy that'll be. We're going to serve him there, and we'll see his face. The Bible says now we see through a glass darkly. Ah, but then face to face see we, we see him we see him but we see him through the word of God and we see through the mirror of God's word but then we'll see him face to face see what, what sin does sin causes us to run from God sin always causes us to hide from God why is it, why is it that it's so difficult to get folks who who are not Christian, or even folks who are Christians, but are living in sin, you know how hard it is to get them to come to church? See? Because they, how many times, you have ever, ever had anybody say to you, well, I'd come, but, you know, the roof might cave in. Or I'll come, but, you know, lightning will strike the church if I show up. Huh? You know what it is? Sin. And, and they really, or they feel like if I come in there, God's going to just strike the place. They, sin causes them to want to stay away from God and hide from God. Sin always does that. Now there's no sin. And, and you want to be with God. And you long to see His face. Our desire will be to Him and we'll want to be with Him. In fact, His name will be in our forehead. Wouldn't that be an awesome thing if that was the way it was now? Wouldn't it have been great if Elijah got saved and got baptized and he'd come up out of the baptistry and Jesus was right across his forehead, you know? Everywhere we go, people see, oh, you belong to Jesus. You couldn't hide it. You wouldn't walk around all day. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Hey, good to meet you. <laughs> you couldn't hide it. There'd be no secret Christians. But in that day, boy, His name will be in our forehead. We'll, 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 we'll openly and gladly belong to Him. And He'll openly and gladly claim us as His own. We'll have His name in our forehead. Wow. And then there'll be no night there for God and the Lamb or the light of it, as it says. And then He says again in verse 6, that these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God, and by the way, everything in the book is faithful and true. Not some of it, not most of it, all of it is faithful and true. Mark it down. Jesus said it was. And then, then he gives a promise in verse 7. Here's his promise. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. He's come coming quickly. He says, and these things are shortly going to come to pass. And, and the exciting thing is, I, 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 I know I know. I, I've grown up in, in church and gospel preaching churches all my life. And, and I know for 50 years people have been saying, hey, he's coming. And he's coming soon. And I know, man, I heard it in 1976 that the Lord was going to come back. And then again in 1988, you know, he's coming back. And then in the year 2000, Y2K, man, this is it. He's coming back. And now here we are in 2015. And, 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 and listen, he stills returning. His promise is going to be true. And we are seeing the nations line up now like we've never seen before. It's happening. Persia plays a big part in that. And Persia is Iran. What's he say to us? Be watching. Be watching. Be looking for me to come. Uh, Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 13. Jesus says this. Watch therefore, 
For ye know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Over again, he repeats similar over in Mark chapter 13 and verse number 37, and I'll read that for you. Mark 13 and verse number 37, where Jesus said this, And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So we're supposed to be watching. We're supposed to be uh, looking. The Bible says we're looking for the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm afraid that we're not fulfilling that Scripture very well. If we were honest, if you're really honest, and I said, how many of you had a thought sometime today that Jesus might come? Did you have any conscious thought today where you looked at the sky and said, are you coming back today? Could this be the day? But we ought to have that thought every day. We're watching. The day does not overtake us as a thief because we're looking for it. But I'm afraid so often we're looking at everything but. And it's so easy to get caught up in everything else that we're not looking for His return. We're not watching as Jesus said we should watch. Verse number 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Last two words are what? Worship God. And that reminds us of this, this very, very important truth. Angels are not to be worshipped. Nobody worships angels. Angels are simply messengers. And by the way, uh, pastors are simply messengers. You don't worship angels and you don't worship pastors. You worship God. There's nobody that... Uh, if you, you, you go up to anybody and you pinch them real hard and they say, ouch, don't worship them. They're flesh just like you are. And listen, the, the, the arm of flesh will fail you. Don't worship Pastor Slayball. I'll fail you. I'm not to be worshipped, and no pastor is to be worshipped. Worship God. And, and he's, He alone is the one that deserves worship. And so it's, it's vital that you understand. And, and there's a reason He put that in here, don't you think? Number 10. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Or it's talking about when he comes back and when he returns. And listen, once that moment happens, it's over. You're filthy, you're going to be filthy still. You're holy, you'll be holy still. There's no none of this none of this getting right after the Lord comes back. It won't happen. You're going to go into eternity and that's how you're going to be. And 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 that's that's the <coughs> process that it's going to that it's going to go through. You see the time of salvation and forgiveness has passed. Those who are unjust will be unjust still. Those will be filthy will be filthy still. And again, he's coming quickly, as he said in verse 12, and his reward is with him. That's the reward that we read about at the judgment seat of Christ in, in 1 Corinthians 3 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And again, and you get down, and I'm going to address verse 14 in just a minute, but verse 15, he, he again gives the list, like he did over in chapter 21, of those who don't make it into heaven. Out without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Isn't it interesting how, how when God makes that list of wicked people, 
he always includes liars? Because who is the father of lies? Satan himself. How vital it is. You know, one thing that got ingrained into me from my father was to tell the truth. Man, he drilled that into us. In, in more ways than one. And he applied the board of education to the seat of knowledge a few times to make sure we understood what that meant. And I learned to you tell the truth no matter what. And, and be honest and tell the truth. Now, and, and by the way, but for the grace of God, that's us. That's us. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Would you turn over there, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You find a similar list in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 than what we read there in Revelation 21 and Revelation 22. 1 Corinthians 6. Notice, if you will, verse number 9. The Apostle Paul writes, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Here's the list, ready? Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, <coughs> nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now here's the great part, verse 11. And such were some of you. <laughs> hey, you were those things, but you're not those things anymore. Why not? Hey, you've been washed. You've been sanctified. You've been justified by the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Hey, when God cleanses you and God saves you, He washes that all away. He cleans it all off the record. And it's just as if it never happened. And you are justified. You are declared righteous in the sight of God. That's not you anymore. That's why we have Reformers Unanimous. We don't stand up and say, yeah, Hi, I'm Danny Wright and I'm an alcoholic. No, he's not. He's Danny Wright, child of God. Huh? blood washed and, and bought and such were some of you but not anymore let me let me look at verse 14 because <coughs> it's important we address this because this is the only version of the Bible that has this in it blessed are they which do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city you know, all the other translations change that, and they change it to, blessed are they that have had their robes washed. That it bothers them. That they think that this verse is teaching you that you have to keep the commandments to get in. Okay? I want you to compare, again, study to show yourself approved unto God. How, how, do you believe the Bible or not? Do you believe the King James Bible? Then, then we don't look at this and say, well, that's an unfortunate translation error. That's what you'll read if you open up commentaries. And they'll try to tell you it should be something else. Let's, let's just look at some other scriptures, and I think you, you, you'll see it very plainly. In fact, you only have to go back to 1 John. Look at 1 John chapter 2, first of all, 1 John 2. You go to your left, you have Revelation, then you have Jude, then you have uh, the epistles of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Look at 1 John chapter 2. Notice verse number 4. He that saith, I know him. Who's him? Jesus Christ. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a what? Liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. And hereby know we that we are in him. We know we're in him because... We want to keep His commandments. Okay? Now, let's go over to 1 John chapter 3, <clears throat> verse number 23. Here we go. And this is His, what? Commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. And He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him, and He in him 
keep His commandment. What's the commandment? Believe on His Son, Jesus Christ. So it says, Blessed are they that keep His commandments. Blessed are those that have believed on His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what 1 John 3 tells us. Blessed are they that, that know Him because they keep His commandments. All right? And then 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. Start with verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. This is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And by the way, His commandments are not what? <laughs> They're not hard. They're not hard when you love Him. That explains, I think, very easily verse number 14. Verse 16. I, Jesus, sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus said, I've sent my angel, my messenger, to testify of these things in the church. Who's, who's that? That's the pastor of the church. What's, what's the pastor's job? To testify of these things in the church. What have we been doing for the last... 300 Wednesday nights or whatever it's been uh, we've been testifying of these things in the church we've been testifying just exactly what the Lord said to do so I'm to, I'm to study and to, the pastor's to study and to preach the word of God to you and to point you to the Savior then he gives another invitation verse 17 and the spirit and the bride say come let him that heareth say come let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. One last invitation in the Bible for sinners to be saved. And the Spirit doesn't just say it. The Spirit and the bride say it. Who's the bride? That's us. Hey, who have you said come to lately? Who have you asked to come to Jesus lately? That's our job. The Spirit will say it, and the Spirit says it through us. Where's the Spirit? Where's the temple of the Spirit? It's us. He lives in us. If He's speaking to people saying, Come, He'll do it through us. Okay? And so He's inviting us. We're to become, Hey, come take the water of life freely while you're able to and while you can. Verse 18 I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. All I can say is this. Don't, don't tamper with the word of God. This is God's book. And by the way, he, he said it in the book of Deuteronomy. He said it in the book of Proverbs. And he says it in the book of Revelation. He says at the beginning of the Bible, says it in the middle of the Bible, says at the end of the Bible, don't tamper with my words. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. This is the words of God. And, and don't, don't mess with it. Don't add to it by prayers to be said or other doctrines to believe that are not in the Bible. Don't take away from it like other versions take away from it. You take away from the deity of Christ. You take away from the blood of Christ. You take... Take away the, the virgin birth of Christ. You, 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 you do great harm. And, and there, I, could, I could tell you examples of some of the uh, authors and some of the, the men who decided to write their own version of the Bible and how uh, some of them had ended up with bad health and some of them lost their life. Others lost their voice and their ability to speak. It is incredible, and you can research that, and you can find out those things to be true. Don't mess with God's Word. You'll be in trouble. And then for the third time, in verse number 20, He which testify of these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Third time He says, I'm coming quickly. What do we join with John in saying? Even so come, Lord Jesus. That ought to be our prayer. That ought to be our response to the fact Jesus has come. I don't know about you, but there's times you just look up and say, even so come, Lord Jesus. And I understand 
and I understand why. Some, the other day somebody said, why do you think he hasn't come yet? I, nobody can answer that. But probably there's a lot of young people that are saying, Lord, just, just let me get out of high school. Or, Lord, just let me get, let me get married. And, uh, Lord, let me, you know, and, and say, how do you know that happens? Because I prayed that when I was going through college. And high school, college, marriage, children, and pastoring. Well, now I've been through college, got married, had children, pastoring, got grandchildren. Even so come Lord Jesus, you know. <laughs> but all those ones down behind me, they, they say, no, not yet. I, I want to I experience those things. And so I understand that. But one day he's coming, amen. And until then, what do we need? We need verse 21. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. What do we need? His grace to work, His grace to labor, His grace to love one another. We need His sufficiency for our insufficiency. That's His grace. And we need that to keep going. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together, shall we? Father in heaven, thank you so much for this evening now. Thank you for the wonderful time we've had in the book of Revelation. Thank you, Lord, for putting it in the Word of God, that we could study it and glean from it. Lord, uh, you, you've reminded us three times in these last two chapters that, even, that, that you're coming quickly. And we with John would say, even so come, Lord Jesus. But we want to be watching. We want to be ready. And until then, Lord, we want to be saying with the Spirit, come. And all who are thirsty to come and to take of the water of life free. Oh, Lord, help us to be busy because you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so, Lord, help us be busy about your business. As we leave this place tonight, and I pray, Lord, that you'd make us mindful that you're with us and that as we go about to meet folks and we go about our daily duties, that we'd be just mindful to introduce people to you. Use us to that end, Lord. We love you. Thank you for each one who's made their way to church tonight. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to sing our closing song, but uh, uh, it is probably, if, if the forecast was accurate, I haven't looked outside, but you've probably got some snow, probably some little slippery roads. Be very careful. Be careful walking out in the parking lot, getting to your car and all that good stuff, okay? Uh, just, just be cautious, okay? Take your time and uh, want everybody to stay in one piece. Keep the shiny side up, okay? We want you to do that on your car. Let's sing, Isn't He Wonderful, okay? Here we go. Hey, isn't He wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? God bless you. You are dismissed. Choir, come right on up. It's 820.